All right, everyone, it's just a couple of minutes past noon, so we're going to get started with our webinar for today. Um, thank you so much for, for being with, with here for today's presentation on remote teaching strategies for educators. My name is Danielle Lund, and I serve as Associate Director of Digital Engagement for the Alumni Association at Mount Holyoke. Our work at the Alumni Association uh, is all about uh, supporting alum connections and providing meaningful resources and opportunities. Um, I'll share with folks momentarily so, uh, the, the link to our webpage where we're going to be continuing to share opportunities like this one, our Powered By page. Um, so we'll, we'll be sure to share that in the chat box momentarily. We're very happy to have with us today Dr. Gwen Bast and Eric Schilch with us um, from the PAGE program at Mount Holyoke. Uh, welcome, Gwen and Eric. Uh, Dr. Bass uh, is an alum of the class of 2004 and was re with us recently for a webinar on resources for parents and guardians who are now guiding the education experience at home for their kids. She's the director of the Teacher Leadership Division of Professional and Graduate Education at Mount Holyoke, the PAGE program. Uh, she spent nearly 10 years in pre-K to 12 schools as an early childhood educator, special education teacher, and school counselor. She frequently presents on education topics and also consults for caregivers, teachers, and social workers. Um, Eric Schultz is Assistant Director of the Teacher Leadership Program and an eighth grade English teacher at the Knock Middle School in Newburyport, Massachusetts. He's also the Interim Assistant Director for the Outreach at PAGE. He is active in organizing for unions and political campaigns, and he has experience working in independent, parochial, charter, and public schools. He collaborates with Creative Live Theater to build community and transform people's lives. Gwen and Eric, thanks again for, for being with us today. Um, for alums who are tuning in, if you have any questions, please just be sure to include them in the chat box and we will aim to address them at the, the close of Gwen and Eric's presentation. Um, and I think that that takes care of the, the sort of housekeeping elements for, for the webinar. So I'm going to turn it over to Gwen and Eric. It's great to see you all. Um, we are going to provide some ideas about remote teaching um, and learning uh, in response to what you all are facing right now. Um, one of the ways we felt it would be best to, to kind of share some ideas was by talking to our current students and some alumni who are working across grade levels in various school contexts, grappling with similar challenges to those that are being faced by educators around the world right now, um, to hear in their own words sort of like what strategies are working for them and, and how they're thinking about things. Um, so I also want to start by saying thank you for all of the work that you're doing and for being committed to wanting to do this well. Clearly, we're in a completely unprecedented time, and I think everybody, um, I don't think anybody who, who interacts at all with education has been anything other than completely impressed by the ways that, that teachers are really bending over backwards to do right by students and families right now in the face of a lot of issues of, um, a lot of challenges and, and concerns about access and equity. Um, and, and, you know, in addition to some of the tactical pieces that I think you'll learn about through the video that we'll share, we also really like encourage you and support you in finding balance in the ways that you need to, because in addition to managing your role as an educator, you're also likely managing a whole number of other responsibilities that you didn't previously have in these ways. So, um, you know, I just want to acknowledge that piece too. And Eric, I don't know if you um, have any words that you want to say before we move on a little bit. I just wanted to say hi, and um, I'm very happy to be here and happy to hear some of your questions. And also, I hope you really enjoy the materials we put together. I work both um, as a professor with some of the people who contributed to this with uh, Matt Holyoke um, Teacher Leadership Program. And I was also um, a member of one of the cohorts of the Teacher Leadership Program and worked with some of these uh, contributors as fellow students. And I can say just they're some of the most talented and committed and professional people that I know. And so I hope you enjoy the resources that they have to share. Thanks. Okay. Hi, Matt Holyoke team. Uh, my name is Lauren Kim and I 
teach kindergarten in Los Altos, California. I think it is challenging and re regardless of, of what your um, access looks like, it's still a season of life that feels unprecedented um, and we are living through history. So beyond anything, I hope that you're giving yourself grace. I hope that you continue to give um, grace to the families and, and tiny humans that you're serving and um, that we all just, if we operate, that we're all doing the best we can with what we've got and we'll be in a better space. So what Seesaw is, is it kind of looks like Instagram, but it's a digital learning journal. What we like it, why we like it for the tiny humans is that we can assign activities where we can pre-record our reading, writing, math, and phonics. Many lessons, like I just recorded my reading and my math lessons for this whole week, and then also our morning messages. Every day, students have to log in and do an attendance job. So they read our, they listen to our video, um, which is our morning meeting, and we read a morning message. And then in responsive classrooms morning meeting, we also have um, a share. And so their attendance job is like yesterday's was, um, or last Friday's was, um, if you were a crayon, what color would you be and why? Um, and go ahead and, and like they can either post a video, they can type it out, they can voice record something. Um, there's a lot of options and flexibility with the Seesaw platform and students have been really creative with their parents working together to find ways to share out their learning. We've been really flexible in what we're asking. So it kind of gives a breakdown for parents, um, what our ask is for each subject. And then um, we've created, these are all hand drawn by me and Ms. Dugan um, on our iPads because we love us and digital art. Things that they need, we've created a suggested schedule. We've included anchor charts um, for things that students would be familiar with in our classroom to create it as much of a classroom experience as possible. And parents are printing these out and like putting it in their child's workspace or in a binder, um, which we know is kind of special. Uh, the parents more than anything wanted to see the other parents data or like the data from our, our Google Forms survey. And so we we have a weekly newsletter that we sent out and like shared like screenshots of data. And then in response to that, we held, hosted the following week, um, like an evening parent Google Hangout where my teaching teammate and I um, shared a slide deck, which I think I can share with you right here about, um, so now you're like, you become your child's teacher. Now what? So a digital learning parent support um, slide. And we talked about like our teacher language and our, our like behavior strategies because a lot of the feedback was my, t my student has a different relationship with you and, and like academic ask than me. Um, and so how can you help me with that? And so we gave them some sentence stems for um, responsive classroom. So we always start with reinforcing language and then we move to Oh, there we go. Reminding language, and then we use redirecting language. These are just from um, maybe TPT or Google. I think they're just widely used um, sentence stems from responsive classroom. And then also the consequences, um, what happens if you break a rule. And so we, we encourage families to set up um, clear expectations for um, their students as, as students in their homeschool setting or remote learning. Um, and then we also gave um, like the language we as kindergarten teachers use. Like I say, are you doing your job right now? Or what's your writing job? And I love it when you can tell you exactly what they're supposed to be doing. And then you go like, great, sounds like you know just what to do. Off you go. And if they choose not to do it, then they've got to go back to their writing job during like a time they were supposed to do Legos or something fun. Um, so being proactive, being positive, reinforcing the language or like the behavior you want to be seeing and then making the, the consequences um, logical, um, not not rocket science. And it's a, it's really grounded in a responsive classroom, but parents sometimes don't have those strategies to draw from and using consistent language um, from the classroom and in their home has been helpful. I am continuing to ask students and their parents to reflect what was a rose of your day, what was a thorn of your day, what was a rosebud. There's a poem that goes, this life is but a garden bed, the rain, it comes and goes, but you can choose to prick yourself on all the thorns or you can choose to love the rose. Hi, I'm Beth Jarzbeck. I teach at Baird Middle School in Ludlow, Massachusetts. 
Um, I have been at Baird for about 17 years. As far as our district and school expectations um, from the superintendent to administrators, we've been told that student, teacher, and community well-being comes first. Um, we are worrying about everybody's mental and, and physical well-being before we are worrying about um, pushing hardcore academics. Uh, the administration has reminded us of, of three things um, in balancing um, this new endeavor. Um, the first is to be aware of home situations. Um, in my district for the middle school and the high school, um, there are specific schedules given through the week. So each day has an academic subject in the morning and an elective in the afternoon. And the idea is during your assigned class time, P, uh, teachers post assignments. Um, they can schedule Google Hangouts and conduct uh, virtual office hours to check in with kids during this time. Um, we've gotten away from using Zoom because in our first week there were issues at our high school in our high school classes. Um, Google Hangouts are not required, again, with that flexibility and equity issues, um, but it is an opportunity for students to ask questions or to check in. Um, having the schedule um, is a way for students to be able to structure their time at home easier. Um, in this time where we're all separated, social media, you should use it to your advantage. Um, Teacher Instagram accounts or Teacher Gram is it's a very solid community where teachers of um, all grade levels, all content areas, all across the country are sharing what they're doing to try to get through this time, and they're sharing what they're doing freely and asking for suggestions and and putting out what they're doing. Um, we are all in this together, um, and. Um, you never know what you might find as an idea or you may share that might help somebody else. Um, I follow a teacher in the eastern part of the state um, and one of her enrichment activities um, I'm using for my, I adapted to use for my, in, my genius hour um, and it's designing an app that um, would be useful in this time of quarantine. The other thing that I'm finding myself using is uh, the Creativity Project. Um, it is a amazing story and art um, collection where um, students can continue stories, create their own stories, choose your own adventure. Um, I'm using it um, for not only um, some reading comprehension, but also some reflective um, essays. Uh, he has, Colby Sharp has a website. I strongly suggest you look it up. Please feel free if you have questions, if you'd like to connect, this is all my information and best of luck to all of us. Hello, I hope you're all well and keeping safe at home. I am Ann Neary, class of 2018. I'm an ELA teacher in a large public high school in Westport, Connecticut. I've been here four years and I've been teaching for 15. I manage my expectations for myself and my students by trying to create the same sense of personalized attention and community that is the hallmark of my teaching. This means I am dressed in attire that students would normally see me in, even if I have yoga pants below the screen. I greet them, not at the door, but at the beginning of each class with a social emotional check-in. What's the funniest thing you found in your room? Who in your family ate all the desserts? What's your guilty pleasure? And then I show them that I bought People Magazine. Who buys People Magazine? Academically, my lessons are super concise, directions are clear, and overall scope of our unit is communicated pretty much daily. And I have slowed down the pacing. With regard to expectations, the new phrase for my school administration is, we leave it up to your professional judgment. I hope that new attitude continues. My priority is the well-being of my students, my challenge, maintaining community and building empathy. Tony Wagner recently said, academic content knowledge matters, skills matter more, motivation matters most. 
I am holding myself accountable for what matters most. As teachers, we have been overwhelmed with free access to websites and materials. My strategy is to stick to the simplest and most familiar to use. My students are making Flipgrid videos to share their independent reading, Padlet to answer and post questions. I use Google Classroom to send scaffolding materials to individual students, Greencastify to record my lessons for those who can't come to class, we have held virtual whole class Socratic seminars. We've engaged in breakout small group book clubs and students are sharing slide presentations, all the same strategies we would have engaged with in person and that they're familiar with and comfortable with. Each week, I also post non-academic engagements, recipes for the bagels they can no longer run to the store for, inspirational quotes, links to free yoga videos, pictures of me, doing silly things such as dressing as the main character of the book I'm reading, which is why I'm currently dressed as Anne Morrow Lindbergh in the photo. I miss my students, they miss each other, and the more we can be a community and celebrate little victories, the better we will feel and do. I thank Mount Holyoke College for preparing me for this unique teaching environment, and I wish you all health and grace as you navigate these uncharted waters. Hi, my name is Rachel Malervi, and I am a teacher at the Academy of the Holy Cross, which is an all-girls private school in Kensington, Maryland. I teach Latin, and I've been a teacher for eight years now. Your students are dealing with stressors at home that you might not be aware of, and we're all in a new environment with new expectations, and we need to be kind to ourselves and to our students. So when we started distance learning about three weeks ago, I wanted to keep up the rigor, of course, for my students, but also not overload them. So I completely took away homework and really focused on instructional time during class and using class time for feedback in small groups and in a larger group via Google Meet. And it was a great way to stay connected to my students, make sure that they were staying on task and continuing with their Latin curriculum, but also giving them time to kind of take it a bit easier um, not overload them with screen time outside of the class time period and also make sure that they were still happy and still enjoying class. Since we are a private school, we are very lucky in a sense of we are following guidelines and working with um, you know, other schools in Maryland, but we really had a lot of independence and we were very prepared for this in the sense of we've been doing online learning during snow days for the last several years at my school. So my administration really confronted this crisis head on and were incredibly supportive to faculty and students. They really encouraged us more to focus on student relationships and student engagement rather than assessments and drilling students with just copious amounts of work even digitally just engaging with my students and talking with them and hearing about their day and what they're doing and during their week. It's a great way to stay connected and check on the whole student versus just the academic component of that student. I've been using this time with digital learning to kind of allow my students to explore not only Latin grammar and vocabulary and things that they quote unquote have to learn, um, but also other components of the classical world. So um, in the top left here, you see a letter from two mythological characters, Pyramus and Thisbe. So to give my Latin two students uh, the chance to kind of take a break from grammar and explore mythology, which we'll read more when they get to the Latin three level, they used two characters from mythology who had a relationship I wrote Valentine's letters, love letters from one character to another, and as if, you know, they couldn't see each other in person, which is a thing that we're all experiencing now. I had them watch Star Wars A New Hope, which for most of them was the first time, and they read different articles about the hero pattern in Greek mythology, which we've talked about throughout the year, and as part of a project, they had to watch Star Wars A New Hope. Um, we had a great class discussion on that film, and then they had did a comparison chart of how Luke Skywalker and Aeneas fit the hero pattern throughout their two respective journeys 
And in the Aeneid component, they had to cite Latin passages and books that we read and translated. Um, and this was a way for them to show how that hero journey is so relatable and has been translated throughout time in different forms. Um, in the top right here, this was just an example of a grammatical activity I did with my Latin three class. Uh, we use colors to help um, distinguish cases and declensions and without sparing you all the grammatical jargon. Uh, we kept that going in distance learning. So we would share a Google Doc with each other. Um, sometimes they would put it in, sometimes I would just color code it and share my screen. And this was a way that they were all, you know, unmuted. They were calling out answers. And it was a great visual way to keep that consistency from when we were in class in person. You know, when we were in person, I would use eraser markers and we would go through it and uh, diagram those sentences together. And we're doing the same activities just online. And it's a way to kind of keep everything um, their routine or their normal routine that they're used to. The only homework that I have assigned this entire time of distance learning um, it's called the Carpe Diem Project. Sees the day, obviously, in Latin. And I had students um, send me pictures of ways that they were seizing the day during this distance learning time. And my whole, you know, purpose of this was just get them away from their screens and make sure that they were still being kids and still enjoying life and not being cooped up inside. And it's been really successful. And I've loved seeing the way my students are taking this opportunity to explore new hobbies. Um, and on the right is my Twitter handle if you want to go see more of those photos and what they're up to. Um, and I also did Toga Tuesday, which is they show up on Google Meet and Togas on Tuesdays um, and we celebrate Latin in class on our Togas. Um, so to all the educators in the world, you know, we're doing a great job. And as long as we keep our classrooms, a safe space for our kids. We're doing our job during this time. Good luck to everyone. Hi, everyone. My name is Trisha Caliento, and I would like to share with you some of my personal experiences and successful strategies for navigating teaching during a pandemic. So a little bit about myself. I am a fifth grade teacher. I teach all core subjects and I am in my fifth year of teaching in a Springfield Public Schools in Springfield, Massachusetts. All of my students are considered low income and receive free breakfast and lunch. In addition to being a Springfield Public Schools teacher, I am also an alumni of the Mount Holyoke Master of Teacher Leadership Program 2019 and the work is considered optional. So the expectation for families is if they can, please do. And if you can't, we understand this is a challenging time for everybody. Um, and during this time, teachers are also expected to attend virtual PDs, which is really cool because some of the PDs are guided to remote learning and some of them are directed toward programs and curriculums that we will be implementing in the future. So as I said, I teach in a low income district, which means my students have challenges like um, lack of accessibility to um, technology, Wi-Fi, food, shelter, things like that. Um, so really keeping in mind that not all students are going to connect or participate in remote learning. And my job is not to police students or families. My job is to just be another resource and um, support for them during these challenging times. And I think it's really important in order to find balance and overcome some of those stretch stresses that come along with remote teaching. It's really important to count every single small and tiny win, as well as find every bright spot week to week because as we all grow, we all get better. Um, so my personal strategies while remote teaching, I like to do a lot of my communication via Class Dojo. I've also set, set up a Google Voice number and how it works is I provide families with that number so they can directly contact me. So if they need me, they know how to get in contact with me. Um, and then I've also been really privileged to have stamps and envelopes and paper. So I have sent all of my students handwritten letters and hopefully this week we'll send a second batch to just reach out and say, hey, I'm here and you've got my support. Um, I know other things that my school has been doing it was last week we had a really awesome school spirit week where we did different things on different days and everybody participated as they could and it really helped create a school 
a unity in our school community that we would have on a normal day. And then definitely a strategy has been connecting with colleagues and getting their ideas and feedback and just saying, hey, what are you trying? I might want to try that. Could you support me? What I like to do primarily is make sure that like all the links are right there. Everything is really clear. So that way, if a student can't understand it, it should be really easy for their parent to understand. Um, again, thinking about students, student circumstances, a lot of my students' parents are essential workers. So students are home alone. They're babysitting themselves as well as younger siblings. So as you can see, laying it across five days a week, really indicating like no electronics or this is the time to use electronics. Um, I love math more than anything. So for me, what I really wanted to create was opportunities where students could also make like the same kind of math games we have in our classroom. So for me, if, let's take a peek. Um, I like to, to create step-by-step -step how to make the games that we see in our classrooms. So it's really just a step-by-step -step guide on how to make them and then how to play them. And then as I evolved in my lesson planning, um, in the following weeks for math, this is kind of like where the biggest switch up happened. It wasn't all games because I under that, understand that some parents would be like, that's not really math. Um, giving them problems where they had to work it in reverse. So things that, again, are really accessible for all students, regardless of their circumstances. And so only in math and reading do I do the other fifth grade teacher and I really distinguish when you should be off electronics and when you should be on electronics. In terms of writing, students have full autonomy and can decide if they want to type, handwrite, whatever it may be. And then moving into social studies and science, again, uh, there's no clear um, direction in terms of you have to answer on paper or you have to answer on the computer. It's again, students full discretion in terms of what they would like to do and how they would like to do it. And then really thinking about my science plans, um, the balance for no screen time has been really important because I really want to make sure that I'm providing students with the opportunity to do hands on learning and hands off technology, but making sure it's things that they have in their house. So always keeping in the back of my mind, my students and their circumstances um, and making sure that students and families know that if they need an alternative option, I'm here to provide it. And that's really what I've been doing. Um, here's my contact information if you'd like to get in contact. And if you have any ideas to share, I'd be more than happy to take some because it's definitely becoming a bit more challenging as we move later into the plans to be creative and utilize all the opportunities that can be. Hope it helps. All right. So that's that's kind of what um, our teacher leaders have put together, talking a little bit about some of the strategies that they're using. Um, and you know, we'd love to hear any questions that anyone has um, about issues you're facing in your own situations or some of the strategies that were shared there or anything like that. Thanks so much, um, Gwen and Eric, for, for putting together this collection. Um, so yeah, again, we just encourage uh, any participants, uh, if you want to share in the chat box, any questions, any um, suggestions that, that might be helpful to add to the conversation. Um, I think we'd also be interested, interested to see if you're willing to share what area you're currently teaching in um, specifically. Uh, if you if you feel inclined to to share that information in the in the chat box, and while people are thinking, I would just add um, the theme that emerged for me is number one, take care of yourself and your family, and be mindful of the burden that this new model places on us as educators and as people. Right? Um, if you can't love yourself, it's hard to love others. Uh, and then the other thing that emerged for me was, and this is certainly true in my own work, engagement really, really comes first right now. Um, so a lot of times I'm thinking first about the catchiest, stickiest way to get kids into the work, uh, even before necessarily I'm thinking about rigorous content objectives. 
um, because uh, I just want to really contact the kids and get a sense of where they're at. And it's the creative assignments that oftentimes seem to give them the entryway into exploring their experience and developing the emotional intelligence that's so important right now. So I, I and a lot of people who shared with us today are really thinking about engagement first. Thanks so much, Eric, and, and wanted to offer a correction. Um, it's Eric Shilga. Sorry for the, the pronunciation error. Okay, um, so not seeing questions come through, I'm going to go ahead and share our um, Powered by Page link, um, where we're going to continue to post oper webinar opportunities opportunities like this one. Um, just want to extend huge thanks again to uh, Gwen and to, to Eric for being with us today, for putting together this, this great collection of recommendations from alums of the program. Uh, that's just so, so terrific. Um, and we will look forward to, to seeing you all in uh, future webinars. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>